Yadatvam Kripaya Bhutya Tejasa Mahimau Chasa Just Isa Gunai Sarvais Tatosi Bhagavan Prabhu. O oh my Lord, because you, because you are endowed with causeless mercy, all opulences, all prowess, and all glories, strength and transcendental qualities, you are the supreme personality of Godhead, the master of everyone. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In this verse, the word Tato Sri Bhagavan Prabhu means, therefore, you are the supreme personality of Godhead, the master of everyone. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is endowed with six opulences in full, and moreover, he is extremely kind to his devotee. Although he is full in himself, he nonetheless wants all living entities to surrender unto him so that they may engage in his service. Thus, he becomes satisfied. Although he is full in himself, he nonetheless becomes pleased when his devotee offers him patram pushpam phalam toyam a leaf, flower, fruit, or water in devotion. Sometimes the Lord, as the child of Mother Yasoda, requests his devotee for some food, as if he were hungry. Sometimes he tells his devotee in a dream that his temple and his garden are now very old and that he cannot enjoy them very nicely. Thus he requests the devotee to repair them. Sometimes he's buried in the earth and is unable to come out himself. He requests his devotees to rescue him. Sometimes he requests his devotees to preach his glories all over the world, although he alone is quite competent to perform this task. Even though the Supreme Personality of Godhead is endowed with all possessions and is self-sufficient, he depends on his devotees. Therefore, the relationship of the Lord with his devotee is extremely confidential. Only the devotee can perceive how the Lord, although full in himself, depends on his devotee for some particular work. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita, where the Lord tells Arjun, Nimitta matram bhavam savasvachin. O Arjun, merely be an instrument in the fight. Lord Krishna has the competence to win the battle of Kurukshetra, but nonetheless, he induces his devotee Arjuna to fight and become the cause of victory. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was quite incompetent enough to spread his name and mission all over the world, but still he depended upon his devotee to do this work. Considering all these points, the most important aspect of the Supreme Personality's Supreme Lord self-sufficiency is that he depends on his devotees. This is called his causeless mercy. The devotee who has perceived this causeless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by realization can understand the master and the servant. Umagyan timirandas yagena jena salakaya chaksu un melitam yenatas mai shri gurave namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamene. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Aurabhani Pracharine, Nirvishesa Sunyavadi, Asyatya Desatarine. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasadi Gaur Bhaktivrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I will return in just one moment. <laughs>
Uh, this verse has just something very essential, like you might say, very important to say. And that is, the Lord is very inclined to his devotees. Um, it's mentioned here that he, he's endowed with causeless mercy. And all opulence, all fame and pro prowess, glory, strength, qualities. But here, none of these are being il illustrated. What is being said is his relationship with his devotees. In other words, he's very kind. His kindness extends beyond the normal sense of kindness. Is that usually kindness can be described as someone does something for you that benefits you. In some way or other. But here kindness is takes takes another step. And that is the Lord does something and gives the credit to his devotee. He remains hidden behind the scenes of the activity and simply empowers his devotee, uh, inspires his devotee to do something in devotional service where he, that devotee becomes glorious by that activity. In other words, a devotee does something that is outstanding. And then the Lord gives the devotee the credit. But Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the ability in all living entities. So whatever we can do is given to us by Krishna through his energy. He wants something done. He requests the devotee to do it. The devotee does it and Krishna gives him the credit. And there was uh, a story, of course, in the tradition of Christianity where uh, it was uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, he appeared to him in a vision and told him to build him a temple. St. Francis was thinking how to do it. He didn't have any resources. But somehow, by his strong devotion and his determination, he created this simple but glorious temple in honor of Lord Jesus Christ. And he is known as the person who did it. But we understand from that situation, it was the Lord. When Raghunath Das Goswami was in Vrindavan and Raghunath Das Goswami had uh, come across Radhakun and Shamakun and could see that they, were, they needed much work. They had been hidden away from the eyes of the public for a long time and just before that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had discovered Radhakun and Shamakun. And Raghunath Das Goswami took on the service of trying to excavate and uh, bring back Shamakun and Radhakun in a glorious way. But that required money and it required a lot of wor work. And he had no money and he had no desire to get money. And he was thinking how to do it. There was one traveler who was coming to Bhadrik Ashram, Ashram regularly to worship uh, uh, Badrinath, Badri Badri Vishal. He would come every year at the same time. And this man was quite wealthy. He would make this pilgrimage by himself and he would give a large sum of money in donation to Badrinath. Now, when he came this particular year, 
he arrived late and then right after that he took rest but then in his dream the lord appeared to him and said you have come again to see me and i'm very happy and grateful for your devotion and i know you want to offer some resources to me but please don't take that don't give them here go to vrindavan my devotee raghunath he is working on a project to excavate the holy my holy bathing places so please go find him and give him the money and so i mean from badrinath to Vrindavan is not a small trek. <laughs> it's quite more than a thousand miles. But this devotee was so dedicated to Badrinath that he accepted it as his instruction. And it took him, I think, quite a long time, many weeks or maybe even a month to get to Vrindavan. Finally, he found Raghunath Das Goswami and presented him with the money Raghunath Das Goswami immediately hired some people to do the work, and then they excavated and reshaped Radhakun and Shamakun as it is now in all of its glory. But you see how the Lord works in such a way as that through dreams or through inspiring his devotees in different ways, he gets things done, but at the same time, he gives the credit to his devotee. That's Krishna. <laughs> Prabhupada mentions here also another example that uh, Lord Chaitanya, he spread Krishna consciousness all over the Indian con subcontinent. And uh, he traveled for six years from all the way from Jagannath Puri down the uh, western, the eastern side of of India, all the way down to Cape Comorin, and back up all the way till he got to Bombay, crossed over, and that from the area of Bombay, he crossed back through, and came again to Jagannath Puri. It took him six full years to do that, but he spread Krishna consciousness everywhere. He is the Supreme Personality of God, and his desire was to give Krishna consciousness to everyone and anyone. And later on, when the devotees asked Prabhupada, why didn't Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take Krishna consciousness all around the world? Prabhupada said, he left it for me to do it. <laughs> he wants to give me the credit. So here we again, we have a, an example which is more uh, close to our heart. Srila Prabhupada's empowerment to spread Krishna consciousness when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was completely competent to do the work himself. He could have took Krishna consciousness everywhere. But he empowered Srila Prabhupada. That's how the Lord works. He likes to empower his devotees, give credit to his devotees, and not even be known for his involvement. And here you can say here, the very beginning of the translation says, you are endowed with causeless mercy. That's the causeless mercy that he likes to glorify his devotee. He likes to engage his devotee in works of devotion, which glorify the devotee and purify the devotee to come to a stage of pure devotional service. The Lord is very merciful. The Lord is very kind. In our day-to-day -day life in Krishna consciousness, when we, when we reflect on what we are doing and how we are doing what we're doing, we can clearly see that <clears throat> a lot of the things that we do and a lot of things that we are protected from doing is all done by the mercy of the Lord. He's always there 
to protect his devotees, to elevate his devotees, to empower his devotees, to inspire his devotees. <clears throat> and that is the Lord. For him, his devotee is everything. So it says, one who becomes a devotee of the Lord actually has a very exalted position. <coughs> Excuse me. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, or not, I'm sorry, when Srila Prabhupada was referred to as being a devotee of the Lord, Prabhupada responded in a very uh, surprising way. He said, oh, devotee? Devotee, that is very elevated. So he gave us a, a, a more clear understanding of what the word devotee means. One who is very dear to the Lord. Oh, anyone who becomes a devotee of the Lord becomes very dear to the Lord. Even if they are not a pure devotee, if they are trying to serve the Lord in some way, that dearness is always there. And of course, when they give everything to the Lord, then uh, the Lord becomes the, the constant companion of that devotee and is always with him in the Lord and he carries the Lord with him in his heart and the Lord goes everywhere. That Lord, then the devotee becomes uh, fully empowered and protected by the Lord, by the Lord's mercy. So the Lord loves his devotee. That's why it, it says that when if you offend his devotee, you offend him. Uh, when Krishna is offended, he doesn't take it seriously at all. Of course, we shouldn't do that. But it's understood that when his devotee is offended, he takes it very seriously. So um, we see how much the Lord loves his devotee. So we should understand that devotional service is very rare and very glorious at the same time. Although it may appear to be in many ways, some ordinary activity we perform. Actually, it is not ordinary, it's extraordinary because it brings us in connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the source of all, of everything in existence and the cause of all causes. He is the Supreme Power, but still, although he is so powerful and qualified to do anything and everything on his own, he likes to empower his devotees. And he likes to give them the credit for the work that he does. <laughs> because a devotee knows without the mercy of the Lord, there's nothing can happen. Only the mercy of the Lord makes things happen or don't happen. Someone may do something but if one wants to actually make advancement in Krishna consciousness, it requires mercy. Mm -hmm. And mercy means that something comes without you asking for it. We qualify to receive mercy by connecting ourselves with him in devotional service and that becomes the mercy. The Lord is very merciful. Um, sometimes he appears not to be with us or very far distance from us, but that's only our wrong perception. He's the closest thing with us and he's always with us every moment, guiding us, inspiring us, correcting us. He does it through his energies and many times he does it himself directly. This is the relationship with the devotee and the Lord. Uh, he puts himself under the care of his devotee when he appears in this world, either as the deity or in his form as Krishna, who accepts a father, a mother, or some friends, some resources. So 
So that's Krishna. He's very kind to his devotee. And so, uh, therefore, if one is connected to Krishna in devotional service, then what is the use or what is the value of having any other connection in this world? Whatever any other connection is simply maybe to facilitate our, facilitate our relationship with Krishna. But what can any, Prabhupada says, what, no one can do any good to anyone at any time in any situation. Sometimes we see people doing good to others. But Prabhupada explains that. He said, the Lord says, oh, do good to this person and that person will do good to that person. And that person looks like the person who did it, but actually it's Krishna in the heart inspiring them. Well, that's why Prabhupada would say, and he said it a few times, no one can do any good to anyone unless Krishna wants it to happen. No one can harm even a slight hair on the he head of a devotee if Krishna doesn't allow it. So it is Krishna's mercy and Krishna's behind the scenes, you might say, activities that make everything wonderful and happen, especially for his devotee. And when it's time for the devotee to leave the world and the Lord is personally present to take them back to the spiritual world. So for his devotee, he is very much enthusiastic. If his devotee gets in danger, he's there to protect. If a devotee needs something, he's there to supply it. If the devotee remembers him, the devotee becomes happy and the remembrance comes with Krishna. As, as we were speaking yesterday, Sarvasya Jaham Riddhisani Visto Matat Smirti Gyanam Apohanam Cha. He gives you knowledge. He gives you forgetfulness. He gives you remembrance. He is with you always in every moment of your life, even when you are sleeping and you're not aware of that. He is there with us. That's the mercy of the Lord. Because the non-devotees are not interested in the Lord, and they are more interested in enjoying in this material world, he's with them through the material energy. But the material energy is a bad master. The material energy works in such a way as to cause difficulty for the living entity to fulfill their desires for happiness. So the material energy is not really a friend of the living entity when the living entity is simply rejecting or neglecting their relationship with the Lord. The living, the material energy simply becomes a task basketer, punishing the living entity. But for a devotee, the material energy brings the devotee closer to Krishna in different ways. <laughs> Even if the devotee gets sick, that sickness is a way for the material energy to act to bring that devotee closer to Krishna. Because the devotee only wants Krishna and therefore Krishna allows the material energy to bring to give that devotee some difficulty which brings that devotee closer to him so it's it's only six as it says in the uh, srimad bhagavatam whatever you do in devotional service is glorious and it's eternally fixed and never lost Whatever you do in material life is lost at the time of death. And even while one is still active in material life, still they cannot fulfill their desires for happiness. So this, is, this verse is interesting. How Krishna works in such a way as to empower his devotee to do something wonderful and the devotee does it, and Krishna gives him the credit. So when we understand this principle, we, we understand that 
There's no limitation in our devotional service. That's why Prabhupada used to say, try to do something wonderful for Krishna. Try to do something wonderful for Krishna. Don't just be a routine devotee going on where you're simply, you know, well, I chant my japa and I, you know, I read once in a while and I go to the temple and I pray. No, that's nice, but Krishna is there. Try to do something wonderful for Krishna. And by doing, trying that, you'll see that Krishna will empower you with all success. Sometimes we say, try to think outside of the box. <laughs> and that's how Krishna consciousness was spread around the world. The devotees learned that art from Prabhupada. That Prabhupada was always taking huge risks and coming up with amazing plans for spreading Krishna consciousness. And the devotees capitalized on that mood and were very utilitarian in uh, developing ideas on how to spread Krishna consciousness that were somewhat novel and uh, were what we say adventurous, you might say. At the same time, they were effective in spreading Krishna consciousness. So um, devotees can find happiness in thinking what can I do for Krishna that I'm not doing now that will uh, help to spread Krishna consciousness more to other living entities? It's a kind of an excitement. One can think in terms of, well, I can connect with something that is successfully going on now, or I can come up with some of my own ideas and uh, work to uh, come up with uh, a plan on how to reach more and more living entities with Krishna consciousness. I saw one, the devotees wanted to go to places that they had never gone before, say they were going to the, to the South Pole, where it's, it's just an icy country, that's all it is, is ice everywhere. Uh, they decided to take a pilgrimage to these very cold places and try to spread Krishna consciousness. And it's interesting, it was an interesting video that was uh, shown, uh, displaying where they went and what the some of the people that they met and how they spread Krishna consciousness in practically desolate areas where no human being could possibly live, but still there were people there. <laughs> This is uh, this is one example of just a little bit of adventure. Uh, how did Krishna consciousness come into into London? Is an adventure itself. Now Prabhupada sent six devotees, three three couples, to spread Krishna consciousness with hardly any money and no place to live. So that empowerment comes by the mercy of the spiritual master and one's endeavor to take that mercy and use it to spread Krishna consciousness. And sometimes we might think, well, We've come up with all the ideas. No, there's always more ideas on how to spread Krishna consciousness. Of course, you don't have to be unique. But if you are, that's wonderful. If you're not, simply try to do something outside of the box. <laughs> don't simply be a temple devotee where you just go on with the routine schedule and just, you know, that's nice. Well, that's nice too but the world is in trouble. <laughs> Prabhupada said, you know, Kali Yuga will increase more and more. The demons will increase and different, the material situation will become 
very much hard to deal with and even the basic necessities of life will be hard to achieve and that is the progress of kali yuga but at the same time krishna consciousness is that is that um, light within the darkness not only a light but a very broad spotlight that will light up the whole world in krishna consciousness if we are enthusiastic and willing to take some risks on behalf of Krishna to spread Krishna consciousness. Okay. But Prabhupada said, don't take a risk beyond your ability to maintain. In other words, sometimes people think, well, I just go for it, but we should not lose our Krishna consciousness in taking these risks. That's important to understand also. And that requires some introspection and some advice also. Okay, so we'll conclude here. This verse is really a um, powerful uh, display of how merciful Krishna is and how much he is inclined to his devotee. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That was a beautiful class. Thank you so much. I request devotees, if there are qu any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Uh, Maharaj, actually, there is a question in chat by Das Prabhuji. He says, Hare Krishna, dear devotees and Gurudev, I have a question regarding our projects, how to become empowered by devotees and the Lord. Well, you can become empowered by qualifying yourself. The empowerment is available. By taking the instructions of the spiritual master and following them very carefully with the idea to um, absorb yourself in your service. In other words, we want to, whatever service we're doing, once we want to become expert at that and do it in the best possible way with complete attention and as much devotion as we can access. We don't want to be get by devotees like, okay, I got to do this, I got to do that. So I'll do this. This is too hard and that's, that's more my nature. I mean, if that was Prabhupada's idea, we wouldn't be here now. <laughs> and that is a reality that Prabhupada, he took risks, big risks, in order to spread Krishna consciousness. And that risk, you know, changed the world. <laughs> so it only takes one devotee to... to you know, make mil millions of people Krishna conscious. If that one devotee becomes empowered by the Lord and that empowerment is available when one becomes fully dedicated to the service of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Shri Devi Mataji has raised hand. Mataji, please go ahead. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. This is so inspiring. This is so uh, exciting to hear all these things. Reminds me of the first generation of devotees and how adventurous and how bold and how uh, innovative and how sold out they were to Prabhupada that you know when Prabhupada said go and do this they just did it and amazing things happened by their taking up that order of uh, spirit of their spiritual master Srila Prabhupada and how uh, Krishna consciousness spread throughout the world 
So as you were speaking, I was remembering Srila Prabhupada saying uh, to the Americans, he said, what's the use of you being Americans if you don't do something big for Krishna? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was playing on the American ego. <laughs> because Americans have that mood. They want to do something. They want to be outstanding in something. And it's always in a competitive type of way. But here, Prabhupada took that spirit and directed it towards spreading Krishna consciousness. Like a 19-year-old boy named Shivananda, he said, open up Germany. <laughs> so he went to Germany. <laughs> and after some time, the German Yatra started. Yes, Guru Maharaj, when you hear these memory tapes of the first generation devotees, it's so inspiring to see how they took up the mission and what all they did to spread Krishna. It's because of them. We have all these centers and temples and communities and restaurants all over the world. So yeah, I'm to, to Mal Krishna, Krishna goes, well, I mean, Prabhupada practically had to force him to go to China because <laughs> he didn't want to go, but Prabhupada saw that he could open up China, and he did. He started the Chinese, and then Hare Krishna Maharaj was so attached to Srila Prabhupada by doing personal service to Prabhupada. But Prabhupada said, here's an intelligent boy. And he sent him to, I think, the, the Norwegian countries in that area, Sweden and Denmark and all that. And then he spread Krishna consciousness throughout Europe. So yeah, and I see that, you know, sometimes you simply go out with your banana bread and start doing a little kirtan in the park and people are coming and they're chanting and you're meeting people from other traditions and getting opportunities to speak at different venues. So yeah, like that, that's, an, that's, that's a good example of how taking a, a risk for Krishna will somehow or other bring about some kind of uh, development where Krishna consciousness expands. Yes, Guru Maharaj, and as more and more of us come together and come up with some nice uh, projects and plans, there's so much to be done in so many ways to spread Krishna consciousness. So thank you for, I'm feeling very inspired. I'm feeling very excited. I'm feeling there's a big adventure now in Krishna consciousness waiting to happen, and we all just have to get together and do it. Yeah, it's uh, we're doing it, but but the thing is, there's much more to do. <laughs> right. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yeah, take, class. Take care of your health, and then you can really do a lot. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you. Mm Hare -hmm. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. Maharaj, that was a wonderful lecture with a lot of essence in there. And the line that I really liked the most in that purport is when Prabhupada is saying that Krishna can come and preach on its own, but he sent his empowered devotees. It's so much true for Srila Prabhupada. And, and this also... The verse also is, is, is in contradiction of the purports where we say that Krishna can do everything, yet he, he likes to be dependent on his devotees to fulfill certain actions. So this also explains to, my, to me, uh, Maharaj, the achintya tattva for Krishna, the inconceivable contrast that we have. So that's wonderful. Yeah, he also comes and puts himself dependent on his devotee, like when he become when he becomes the deity. And he depends on his devotees to take care of him. So he puts himself under the care of his devotees. But as the deity, he is also all powerful. Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, that's how he works. 
Prabhupada said he, you know, he can spread Krishna consciousness. It's not, not hard for him. But then he wants, but he wants to, and he wants his devotees to become purified. And so by empowering the devotee, they not only do wonderful things on behalf of the Lord, but they purify themselves and qualify themselves to go back home, back to Godhead. That's so true. So Maharaj, the follow-up question with that is that uh, Sri Devi Mataji said that, you know, during Srila Prabhupada's the first generation, Prabhupada's word was the, you know, like law and order, you know, it was followed and it was uh, devotees endeavored their best. What do you think is lacking now uh, uh, that we fail to all follow the orders of the spiritual master, whether it be Siksha Guru or Diksha Guru? And how can well, we, we, have, we, have, we have a super infrastructure that's developed, and so we're sitting back on our laurels. But now even that's being pulled out by this present situation. And that's also part of Krishna's mercy. He's, limit, he's, he's given some limitations are being placed upon us just to see how much we are, uh, what is the word? Uh, how we can adapt to the situation and still continue to, to spread Krishna consciousness. And it's happening. Happening. Uh, the technological society is very nice. And, and technology has given us chances for communications all around the world in different ways. But it's an also a way to become complacent and lazy, too. We have to be careful that anything material is two sided, it can bring us opportunities for advancement or it can take us away into the material energy. So I think we're just a little bit, I mean, in those days, there wasn't much material facilities. We had to struggle just to maintain ourselves, but that struggle was also an opportunity to get off the bodily platform and accept the difficulties for the service that was required to do. If you, uh, if you limit yourself in Krishna consciousness, then you're limited. <laughs> if you realize that you're not limited, you only can limit yourself. But then you have to see where you as a person can be most effective. What is your nature where you can use that to do things for Krishna, to spread Krishna consciousness? And that may be different for different people. So Prabhupada said, take a risk for Krishna, but not at the expense of your own spiritual uh, practice. Mm -hmm. He said, if you go fishing, but don't fall in the water. I mean, we have, we have examples of some leaders in our movement that went outside of the box to preach Krishna consciousness to the secular society. And there was much success in that. For instance, Bhakti Tirta Swami was very eclectic in seeing how to enter into the mood of various types of sectors of society and adopt somewhat of their language and at the same time use that as an opportunity to bring in Krishna consciousness. So it takes some, some intelligence. But Krishna will supply the intelligence if we are... The point is we can always do more. That's the point. <laughs> I think we get too, too comfortable in the comfort zone because yeah. even in, in the manner we see that everything is given, everything is there, the infrastructure is there. So there is a tendency to become too much complacent because everything is there. 
Yeah, but somebody had to work to make it happen. Yes, initially, yes, Maharaj. So why limit ourselves to what is what is already established? Why not continue? Just like the Yavanti school. So they they started with one, now they have about eight schools. So the, the idea that idea of Yavanti school has spread many places and now it's being transported into other countries also. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Yeah. So you can, I mean, we get, you have to think, where can I, you know, fit in and really make a difference? It may be something simple or maybe something, it doesn't have to be something grandiose, but we should think in terms of let me do more. We shouldn't think, but think, well, I'm doing enough and that's it. If we have nice prasadam, nice temples, and nice kirtans, that's a way to preach Krishna consciousness to the conditioned soul. So use those facilities to attract more and more people. And the world is very media oriented. There are devotees are now using video to spread Krishna consciousness, which is very, very much in vogue now. People like the visual. <clears throat> and it can be used. You, you just can think of how you can do it, or through writing. There's so many things you can you can think of. It doesn't have to be something new, but we should think how to improve. And that in that improvement will automatically, that desire will automatically bring about ideas. Krishna will give you the ideas if you're if you're sincere. Sarvasya Jaham Ridisani Visto. But that smirti agyanam apoanam cha. We should remember that verse. That's a very key verse to our execution of devotional service. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Thank you for the elaborate answer. And yes, we have to do something outside of com outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. Comfort zone means Maya. <laughs> That's what it <laughs> That's basically what it is. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi Mataji, uh, do you want to go again? Uh, have we you? have Suda. Was did Suda have her hand up again? Oh, uh, my daughter Aparajita wanted to offer her obeisances. That's why I put my hand up. She's oh, okay. Hare Krishna, Krishna Maharaj. Aparajita, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I re I got your letter. Thank you for making the time to read it. You look well. Yes, I'm doing well. Thank you, Maharaj. Good, good, good. Yes, I'm happy to be here with my mom. Hi, everyone. <laughs> no, she's happy to be with you also. Yes. <laughs> How long will you stay? Two weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. We'll hope to see you more often on our little conference here. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Yeah, and if you like, you can speak something also. If you, if you feel inspired. If you feel inspired. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you very much. Sudha Mataji, do you have anything to share? I 
I thought I saw her hand up. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. She has unmuted. Uh, Dr. we cannot hear you. No, we cannot hear you, Mataji. Mataji, would you like to write in the chat? Anyone else has anything to share or question or comments? Please go ahead. Okay, so that matters. Okay. Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Obeisance is all glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Um, so, my, so my apologies, I joined the call late because I was, I was at work before, so I missed um, the main part. But I wanted to ask a question based upon a class you gave a few days ago. Um, when you were speaking about Gopal Bhatta Goswami in terms of the six Goswamis. And I wanted to see, I wanted to um, to clarify, I read somewhere that Gopal Bhatta Goswami was an incarnation of Ananga Manjari. And is that is that correct, first of all? Is it in a Gauradesh Deepika? Um, it was a quote from, actually, it was a quote that was on social media from Bhakti Rasamrita. Well, it said Bhakti Rasamrita Maharaj said it. So I just wanted to check it, because just in case. Um, I have never heard, but Ananda Manjari is manifested as an energy of Balaram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's also Radharani's younger sister. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a little bit of a mystery as far as we don't know so much about her. But we know that Balaram incarnates as Ananga Manjare in the mood of Madhurya Ras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the connection with Gopal Bhatta Goswami, it's a little bit away from my understanding. Not from much. Thank yeah. You. I would I would like to see the reference. Mm, yeah, yeah. Something oh, like that. And something like that must be referenced. It can't just mm. be, you know, something that comes by word of mouth. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Much. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for your association on the weekend as well. Oh, was that really, was that really was inspired. nice. Yeah, and we'd like to do it again sometime. It was wonderful having your association, Marge. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, anyone else has anything to share? Okay. Okay, so we can conclude sure. here. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association today. Thank you for a beautiful class. Lavanya mm -hmm. Mataji, do you want to say anything? Yeah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Rosh Tashila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the inspiring class, Guru Maharaj. I like the point that um, the comfort zone is Maya. So uh, definitely um, one has to um, come out of the comfort zone uh, to do something in Krishna consciousness. Um, I always uh, meditate on that. Thank you so much for reminding that again. I just want to thank you for the nice class. Hare Krishna. Thank you. And if you, as soon as you try to do something, you will be successful. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. This was so inspiring and very, very powerful class. I like Lavanya Mataji. I'm also very grateful that you reminded us how much the Lord wants us 
to do something for spreading this movement. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. It's something that we should meditate on. And by that, by that endeavor, there will be some ideas manifested. Yes, Guru Maharaj, certainly. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. 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 Thank you.